Hi, this is Flippio Serio, and welcome to Second Earth Alternative. So today I wanted to talk about the moon. And this is a really important episode. Now, I've talked about the moon before, and I apologize for the loyal uh, viewers who, if the images feel repetitive, um, there are, there are going to be new images to this episode. Um, but the one difference about this episode and the previous episodes is this is going to be a really interactive episode. I'm going to be posting the updated links to all the URLs so that you guys can actually check out the images yourself. So before we start, I wanted to just briefly talk a little bit about the moon, uh, just to get you guys uh, warmed up with some of these ideas. Now, what I find so fascinating about the moon is that in the entire solar system, the Earth is the only place that we know so far that has some kind of intelligent life right we don't know if there's something deep in the lakes of europa or the oceans of europa but as far as we know right now on earth we're the only ones with intelligent life and for whatever reason our moon is the perfect exact size as the sun from our perspective okay now outside of pluto we're also the only planet that only has exactly one moon so what are the chances that Earth, the only planet that we know that has intelligent species that can recognize a full solar eclipse would actually have a perfect full solar eclipse to like the 99.9 .9 percentile? I mean, it kind of fluctuates the size of the moon regarding the sun, but it's like perfect. So that type of perfection makes me ask questions. And then when we look at the moon and we start seeing like weird UFOs coming out of the moon, well, that makes me ask even more questions. When I realized that astronauts or, or, or that NASA has not stepped on the moon in 45 years, almost half a century, that makes me ask questions. When I point a, 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 a 4K camera with a telescope on the moon, which we did once, and we capture a UFO flying through it, that makes me ask questions. And so, in fact, he, I was, I'm gonna show you guys this UFO real quick. I did some research. I thought at first it might've been the International Space Station, but here's the problem. The International Space Station, uh, when it transits the moon, it only takes half a second. This object is taking like, I believe it's like four to six seconds to cross the moon. It's not something that can be predicted. Because of all these questions, I wanted to explore more of the moon. So the purpose of this episode is to be able to provide you guys with actual pictures from the actual NASA website with updated links that you guys yourself can take a look at and, and see if, if it's a UFO. You know, don't trust me. Go on the website yourself and take a look. All I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna post all the images live for you guys. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a question after each image and I want you guys to vote and tell me if you guys think this is a UFO, meaning some kind of extraterrestrial craft, or if you guys think this is there, there is a more earthly explanation to this, or more mundane explanation. So this is one of the images that I uh, caught on NASA, and once again, I, like I told you, the link will be right there. So let's zoom in on this image, okay? And what I noticed is this kind of strange object. Now, I'm not saying that this is definitely a UFO. Um, what I am saying is it's somewhat anomalous for an artifact. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna increase the contrast so you guys can see it more clearly, okay? And look how when I increase the contrast, it kind of takes more of a three-dimensionality to this shape, okay? And uh, one other thing that I might do is I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna put a channel mixer and this basically allows me to differentiate the different color channels and sometimes you can draw more details, um, especially if a specific color channel is kind of muddling details here and there. But as you can see, it's, it's strange. It's taking like a three dimensionality that I can't understand why it would be like this as an artifact. Uh, so what do you guys think? Please vote above. Do you guys think this, this is a UFO or you think there's a more mundane explanation to this picture? All right guys, moving on to the next image. This one uh, was also 
possibly an artifact, but I just want to highlight it because it did kind of show some interesting structures that I couldn't understand. So as I drag this image over, I'm gonna increase it again. Do you see how there's almost like a three dimensionality to this image? That's why I decided to highlight this. Um, and there is the exposure change. And if we were to do the same thing with the channel mixer, you can kind of, by taking down the green levels, which you, uh, you can kind of see some th three dimensionality to this, uh, what seems like an artifact at first. Uh, so this is just one of those that I'm not really sure. Sure, you know, maybe somebody knows about uh, a type of lens or, or photographic artifact that I'm not aware of that this could be. But I just want to highlight it. Um, and once again, you guys can check the link and please vote above if you guys think that this is an UFO or if you guys think that this is just a Mudane artifact um, captured on video. Here's the color version and I'll zoom it out for you guys to see in perspective with Earth. Okay, so now moving on to the other images. This evidence, I think, is a little bit more hard to dispute. In fact, I would say this is probably one of my favorite images that I captured from these Apollo images. So let's take a quick look. And I mean, guys, look, I, I've seen a lot of artifacts, but this, this is weird. And, and I highlighted this in my previous episodes, but I just wanted to give you guys the link so you guys can actually take a look at it for yourselves. So I'm gonna increase the exposure, give you guys a sharper look. And what I find so fascinating about this uh, object is that it actually matches another object that I'm about to uh, show you. So I'm gonna put a quick channel mixer so you guys can see how much this object takes a three-dimensional shape. And look at this. So I'm gonna zoom in once again. And, and look as I play with the green channels, right? Look how the three-dimensionality of the craft changes. I mean, it's... It, I mean, I'm telling you, this does not look like an artifact for me. You can see the ring up here. You can see the clear edges. Uh, this image is NASA approved. I mean, this comes from NASA itself. I mean, um, I think this is hard to dispute, if, if I'm gonna just be frank about it. But once again, I want you guys' opinion. Uh, please vote above. Do you guys think this is an actual UFO caught on the Apollo images? Or do you guys think there's more? worldly explanation to this. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, give you guys better perspective. Here is the color version, black and white version. And um, here's what it looks like in perspective to the rest of the sky. It's, it looks kind of small, it's, it's a huge image, so. All right, so moving on. So this image is uh, really, really cool because outside of showing uh, what looks like to be a very clear UFO, you actually almost get to see a space warping that's happening around the craft itself. Um, so I actually talked about this in an earlier episode um, that it seems that when these UFOs get caught on image, sometimes you actually get like a kind of like a photographic effect, whether it's like a warping of space, a warping of time, uh, almost like something that looks like a sonic boom, right? And so this is an example of one of those types of images. And what I really thought was so interesting about this UFO on the moon is, I'm gonna crop this so I can kind of shift it a little bit and show you guys. Okay, look at this object, okay? And look at the object we just examined. Doesn't it seem like we have almost like a top view and then here's the side view of a very similar object? And I always thought this was really weird because it's almost like a way of verifying that these UFOs might be something more than artifacts because we're actually like almost being able to identify the crafts. It's, it's, I think it's pretty impressive. Okay, and then if, if I back out a little bit, there is one other object in this image uh, and it looks just like a regular sphere. Um, you know, if you put some of the contrast in there, you will see that there's a little bit more complexity to the sphere than just a simple sphere. Uh, you can see, let me zoom in, that beyond the green outline, that there's another outline, circular outline. Um, so maybe it's, a, it's an artifact, uh, I don't know. I, the fact that this is right next to another UFO that looks like 
a different UFO that we just showed, makes me think that maybe this is a UFO. I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, so moving on to one of the last images that we have here. This is really interesting because of all the artifacts or possible UFOs that I've seen, I've never seen anything like this, and let me show you why. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this from this angle, but do you see that it looks like there's a circular object that's almost translucent, right? You can see through it, right? You can see the clouds underneath it. So if I increase the contrast, let's take a look over here. You can see the outline even better, right? But yet you can still see through the object outside of this one green area. And, uh, you know, let's just put the channel mixer just to really punch up what we're looking at over here. Look at this, guys. How freaking weird is that? And once again, this image is, uh, you know, NASA approved. It is, it is coming from the Apollo images and NASA just sent this on 2015. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, maybe at one point they were trying to hide it and now they just said, there's no way we can keep the cat under the lid. Um, but it's, it's weird, man. This is not, to me, it looks like a UFO or is in the process uh, of becoming not visible. Um, but I don't know how these things work. I don't know what it is. I just thought it was really, really cool. Uh, it, I thought it was interesting that it showed up in that NASA image. Maybe it's just some weird ice crystal, but it, look, I don't think so, man. This is like into the atmosphere. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see through it and still see the structure of it at the same time. All right, guys, now moving on to this last image. Now, many of you guys may have seen this in my last episode, but I want you guys to see this again. We got the link so you guys can actually take a look at it for yourselves. And if you guys have a better explanation than an uh, unidentified flying object that's possibly extraterrestrial, please give it to me in the comment section below. I have no idea what this is. All I know is this is coming straight from NASA. Let's put the contrast. And what I found so f fascinating is that I saw a lot of these green objects, right? And most of them I ignored because I thought it's probably just a lens artifact, right? But then I got to this last image and I said, wait a second here. This object seems to be projecting something out of its behind. Like, like it's literally like farting on a, like, a, a, like a light ray, right? And outside of this light ray that this object seems to be emanating from behind, it also is emanating a light from underneath. So if you guys are not seeing this clearly, let me put the channel mixer and really show you what's going on here. Like what the hell? Okay, so there it is. Um, if you guys need even more clarity here, let's put the contrast so you guys can really see those light rays. So it's obvious that whatever object this is, okay, or artifact, that this artifact is ejecting some kind of material out of its a-hole, and it seems to be projecting some kind of beam towards Earth, okay? Now, maybe it's some crazy ass weird artifact I never heard of, but what it looks to me is there's some kind of unidentified flying object, possibly out of this world since it's floating above Earth, that is in our NASA images, okay? Now I say our NASA images because NASA, if you guys remember, is supposed to be public. The information that NASA has is supposed to be for the world. Yet, as many of you know, you know, it's been what, 45 years since last time we went to the moon? And then when we actually did go to the moon, we videotaped it. But what happened to the tapes? I mean, I, I believe it went to a national archives, but then when somebody tried to search in the national archives, it was discovered that it was sent to the Goddard Space uh, Center. And when they went to the Goddard Space Center, it seemed like they had no records of these tapes. Now, considering the millions, if not billions of dollars that we spent trying to go to the only object that floats around our freaking planet, okay? Don't you think 
that those tapes would be somewhat valuable? I mean, it's like, to me, it's like losing a national monument. It's like losing the Statue of Liberty and being like, oh, yeah, I don't know where it is. Sorry. What? We should be asking questions. We should be talking about this. This should be part of our national discussion. What happened to the NASA tapes? Okay? This Guys, wake up. Now, I know many of you guys may not think the images I showed you are UFOs, but remember that this place, okay, this moon, that seems to have UFOs flying all over it, they even have a term for this, the, the, the transient lunar phenomenon. They actually made up a scientific term to describe a paranormal event that we can't explain just to make it sound more scientific, okay? Let's be honest, there are freaking lights coming out of the moon. There are UFOs coming out of the moon. We have not been there almost half a century. We lost the tapes, which is supposed to be a national monument by accident. Nobody's asking any questions. So this is why I'm making this episode. This is why I'm going through the 2015 images and looking at the moon and trying to figure out what the hell happened. I mean, what, what else am I supposed to do? I mean, how else am I supposed to figure out what the hell this thing is and, and why it's there, why it's so perfect, why it has this, all these synchronicities I want to know. I want to know. Don't you guys want to know? Okay, so I just wanted to leave you guys off with, uh, we just did an episode with Luis Elizondo. He is the Pentagon official who came out and told us, told the entire nation that UFOs are real, that he worked on a UFO program for the Pentagon. Okay, this is basically government admittance. Okay, the only difference is that he quit the government right before he admitted to it. Um, but he's saying that UFOs are real. Okay, so the world doesn't seem to be waking up to this. It's as if we're all in the hypnotic state of denial. I, I don't know what's going on. But what I did want to do was leave you guys off with this one radio interview by Luis Elizondo, the very man who worked at the Pentagon himself. So let's listen in to him talking about the nature of truth. I risked everything to do this. Um, I'm not sure people understand. I, I gave up a fantastic career I was at the top of my game. Um, I had tremendous respect in the building. And, um, you know, I, I gave up a, a, a retirement, a pension, and everything to do this. I, I uh, you know, a lot of people are willing to do this as a hobby. A lot of people are willing to do this as, as kind of, a, if you will, um, as a side effort. But this was my job. And, and coming out like this was very, very uncomfortable. It was not easy. Um, I can assure you, I gave up from almost everything to do this because I believe in what I was doing, and I believe that the that the department must take this seriously, and there must be a way that allows our people, our folks, our patriots, our heroes to report this information up through the chain without being worried about any type of stigma or retribution. And um, I understood going out, I was going to get a tremendous amount of ridicule. And I'm still getting that ridicule because people don't know my intentions. They, they don't know uh, what we did in the last 10 years. And understandably, some people are mad. I've, since I've left, I've received two threats uh, from people inside that building, which to me is, is, is almost unfathomable. Um, I've had my security clearance um, threatened. And then I had uh, someone call me and actually uh, tell me maybe I should be threatened for my personal safety. Now, that's kind of seems crazy and a little bit ridiculous. I, I understand, but it nonetheless happened. And um, that's, that's a problem for me. That's, it's a problem because I'm, I'm trying to allow our country to have a conversation. And in the end, this is not under the fact that there are things we can't explain is not the providence of any government or any institution. Uh, it's just like Galileo making the point that the Earth was not the center of the solar system. That is not a classifiable fact. So my point being is if this is something that the American people think is important enough to make a national security priority, then they need to have a conversation and let them decide. In the end, I really don't care what the American people decide as long as they have the ability to make that decision themselves. But to keep that information from the American people and not even have a conversation, that is a problem. Because if any of these things, let me give you an example, if any of these things were to come over the United States territory or territorial waters or controlled areas, 
and they had, let's say, a uh, Russian tail number or a North Korean flag on them, it, there would be a national uproar here that that could happen, that they, we could have an aircraft that we did not control in our airspace. People would have been fired, there'd be congressional testimony. And here we have the same situation, but because there's no, no Russian tail number or there's no uh, North Korean flag on, uh, on, on the aircraft, it's crickets. Nobody wants to have the conversation. And I think that's inherently wrong. I think that's a dangerous mindset to have. We have to be able to have that conversation as a nation. And then whatever the American people decide, then I will march out and, and support that decision, uh, and, and I will support it diligently and uh, to the very best of my abilities. But to ridicule people and to not even have a conversation, in fact, suppress conversation and stifle it, that is not in the bed. In fact, that's more of a national security threat, in my opinion, than any phenomena coming into our, to our airspace. All right, guys. So I think you kind of said it all. Um, thanks for listening in. I know it's got a little bit of a heated episode, but you guys got some fresh images. You guys got some fresh links. You guys could, can do your own research. And please, please start asking some questions. And, and, and share this to your friends, share this to your family, share this to the people who matter, because disinformation matters. This is Felipe Osorio. Thanks for joining me. Signing out. <laughs>